Singing Dutchman Productions. Hello and welcome to a very special episode of Doug's Front Porch. It is November. It's fall. I'm sitting up here on the front porch all by myself. I got a hoodie on, a cup of warm cider, and you know what I mean. It's it's that crispness in the air. You can smell the leaves that have fallen off of the trees. It's such a wonderful time of the year here in particularly Pennsylvania, but in the Northeast United States once we get into November. And this episode is very special because it is just me sitting on the front porch right now, but in a little bit I'm going to welcome some people up on the porch virtually to share some thoughts with all of you. This episode is coming out a little over a week before Thanksgiving, that most American of holidays. Besides the 4th of July, Thanksgiving is uniquely American. And yes, I know that in Canada they celebrate Thanksgiving too, but I do believe that we here in the United States were First, shout out to all of my friends north of the border who celebrate Thanksgiving actually in October, but it is now our turn here in November. Last year, I did an episode that talked about a traditional Pennsylvania Dutch Thanksgiving, what that looked like when I was growing up from butchering turkeys uh, to preparing the meal, etc. And you can find that episode. I'll put a link in the show notes down below. But this year, I decided I wanted to reach out to my friends and ask them about what's Thanksgiving for them and you know what do their Thanksgivings look like so I sent each of them a list of questions to think about and here are the questions that I asked each of them one what does Thanksgiving mean to you two what memories come to mind when you think of Thanksgiving three what are your favorite foods at Thanksgiving and finally number four what are you truly thankful for this year. So without further ado, I'm going to turn the microphone over to some friends of mine to share their thoughts on those questions that I just posed and to share their memories of Thanksgiving for each of them. Enjoy. Hi, this is Chris from Lock Haven. What does Thanksgiving mean to you? To me, Thanksgiving means getting together and just giving thanks for all that we have, whether it be a lot or a little, just being thankful for what we have in life. What memories come to mind when you think of Thanksgiving? <sighs> memories of just family around the table, seeing my grand, my grandmother, she would, um, we would drive down to her house and bring her up for the day and she would come up and just enjoy everybody's company and seeing my cousins when I was little and my aunt and uncle and just enjoying a great big meal and then the next day it was Christmas everywhere. <laughs> what are your favorite foods at Thanksgiving? Oh, definitely the yams. Also, my grandmother had a, well, has, she left behind a killer recipe for lettuce with bacon dressing oh i have the recipe now but unfortunately i find it a bit easier to open up the open up the can of waswit bacon dressing boy that stuff is good just just warm warm over a nice bed of lettuce definitely pecan pie always have to have the pecan pie and the cup of coffee afterwards what are you truly thankful for this year? I'd say this year I'm the most thankful for being able to get together with family. Last year we decided to stay apart and we did things over video just for safety and all. But now definitely, definitely thankful to be able to be around family and just start new traditions and rekindle old as well. You don't really know what you have until it's gone, and I definitely missed that last year. Hi, this is Kelly Baker from Lock Haven, Pennsylvania. For my family and I, Thanksgiving means to gather together to enjoy his bounty of love and food on a day when we can express gratitude for each of the blessings he has given us. 
My favorite Thanksgiving memories are visiting with family, watching football, cooking, and just taking time to laugh and relax together. My favorite Thanksgiving foods are the turkey and of course the sweet potato casserole. But most importantly, I am thankful for my family. The four of us have a strong bond and we are there to support each other. We have the best times when we are together and it's those moments that I will always cherish. Hello, this is Maria Maiden Ford Regis. Happy Thanksgiving 2021. This year I'm most thankful for my three beautiful intelligent children, my hardworking husband, uh, relatives near and far, I'm thankful that I've had a chance to do more genealogy and family history work this year. I'm also thankful for my faith. We had some deaths in the family due to the pandemic. Faith was instrumental in getting us through that. I'm also thankful for uh, the purchase of a new camper. We've been getting out and about more in the outdoors and we've been really enjoying the beauty that the United States has to offer. We hope to do that uh, into the coming year as well. Happy Thanksgiving. Hi, this is Megan Van Gorder from Lock Haven, Pennsylvania. Thanksgiving to me is a time where I can consciously remind myself to slow down and take a step back from the hustle and bustle of life and all of the negative or stressful things I might have going on. I get to focus on all of the good things that surround me and spend time with family and loved ones. Thanksgiving is one of the few days each year I'm able to truly relax, step back, and appreciate and enjoy the atmosphere and company. Also, let's not forget Thanksgiving means the absolute best meal of the year. When I think of Thanksgiving, I remember being younger and having a huge family get together at my aunt's house with my immediate and extended family. While the meal was being cooked, all of the younger siblings and cousins would go into the basement to play before making our way up and outside to throw around a football or play tag. We would all gather around the big table once the meal was ready and it was time to eat and everyone would take their turn saying what they were thankful for that year. After the meal, as my aunt was cleaning up the kitchen, all of the dads and uncles and grandpas turned to the living room to watch football as sleepy kids snuggled their way into every nook and cranny of the chairs and couches for some quality time. Over time, of course, we grew up and the gathering shrunk in numbers, but as my generation of siblings and cousins are starting to have their own young kids, I'm pretty excited to start a similar holiday tradition once my baby is born. My favorite food at Thanksgiving is definitely sweet potatoes, but I have to say there was also this grape and walnut salad that used to be at my big family dinner every Thanksgiving. Honestly, I don't even know who made it every year, but I always went back for thirds and fourths. 2021 truly brought me so many blessings to be thankful for. Not only do my middle school sweetheart and I finally get to call each other husband and wife after 14 years, but we also found out that we are welcoming our first child, our son Wesley, to the world in January 2022. I'm of course thankful for my health and the health of all of my loved ones during these strange pandemic times and the fact that I get to go to work every day and teach the most incredible students. I've experienced many changes over this year, but I'm thankful to have a wonderful support system of family and friends who made each transition manageable and rememberable for sure. Hi, this is Jacob Edwards from Logington, Pennsylvania. Thanksgiving means a lot to me. I get to see family that I don't really get to see that often. And one of the memories that I have with Thanksgiving is spending time with my great grandparents and sitting around the table, looking at newspapers because Black Friday being the next day. Um, one of my favorite foods is uh, stuff called chocolate roll. It is basically like a pumpkin roll, but it is chocolate cake with whipped topping in the middle of it. It's probably one of my favorites. And the thing that I am very thankful for in this world is having a family and having friends that support me through all my life decisions and people that are gonna be there for me forever. Hi, this is Deb Klein, Assistant Principal at Central Mountain High School. I'm originally from Cerville, New Jersey, but I'm currently living in Belfont, Pennsylvania. For me, Thanksgiving has always meant family. I've spent every Thanksgiving with my parents in our family home ever since I was a child. For the first time this year, we will celebrate Thanksgiving away from the family home, but we will still be together. On Thanksgiving, family are the people who are blood related, as well as good friends, 
and those who we welcome into the home because they may need a family to celebrate with. I used to hate waking up in the morning to the smell of my mother sautéing celery, onions, and peppers for the stuffing. I still hate the smell, but I do love waking up to it. My favorite Thanksgiving food is really anything but the turkey. If there was one food that I wouldn't tolerate not having on Thanksgiving, it would be the homemade applesauce. But my father's green bean casserole is a really close second. This year, the thing I'm most thankful for is my family, particularly my husband. I'm thankful for every day we've been graced with, for the health that, health that we've maintained, and for the experiences we've shared and will continue to share. Hi, this is Alex Salks from Reading, Pennsylvania. Um, Thanksgiving is actually my favorite holiday. I think. I like Thanksgiving over some other holidays because it's relatively free from dogma. It's plain, it's simple, it's just pure. It's like to me, it's just celebrating the things for which we are grateful our blessings our families and friends our jobs prosperity our health when i think of thanksgiving i think of my childhood I think of the dinners that we used to have. Um, I think a lot about the family who isn't with us anymore. Um, I think our family enjoys a lot of the things that most people think of as Thanksgiving food. That is um, turkey, uh, homemade mac and cheese, stuffing. I guess. No, not stuffing. I don't think we ever did stuffing. Like bread stuffing. What do you call it with the potatoes? Filling? Brussels sprouts. Um, my mom still handles Thanksgiving. Uh, she really always goes all out. And she's tried a lot of new things. So um, her Thanksgiving feast is usually... Um, evolving and expanding from a lot of the traditional foods that we've always enjoyed. Uh, this year, I'm really just most grateful to have everyone that I love come out of this last year and a half alive um, and healthy. Yeah. Hi, I'm Larry Maris from Masonic Light Podcast. I've been giving some thought to being thankful for this wonderful holiday. Thanksgiving actually is my favorite time of the year. It has been for most of my life, as a matter of fact. Uh, and I've been giving a lot of thought to the years past and the family gatherings that we have in Coming from Schuylkill County and the Pennsylvania Dutch heritage, uh, it, it brought back a whole lot of memories. I, I can remember my mother preparing in advance two and three days before the actual holiday itself, gathering the supplies necessary, the, the turkey, the bird, everything that went along with it, uh, ordering the wine from Jaime Bender from Orwin, Pennsylvania, and that was a trip in itself, actually. Jaime would bottle everything that he could possibly bottle, not in wine bottles, but everything imaginable, deliver it to our house two or three days before Thanksgiving. And that was part of the feast, uh, the mm -hmm. turkey preparation, 
Uh, the, the, I can remember as a kid, and I'm talking about the 1950s here, folks. I can remember as a kid when we made potato filling. Now, that's a Pennsylvania Dutch thing because the rest of the world seems to have what they call a breaded filling or a stuffing, they call it, with bread. And they, they don't do it like we do. We made bread filling. But to really, really have some fun, we stuffed it in the bird. Then sewed the bird up, put it in the oven, baked the turkey, roasted the turkey, actually. Pulled the filling out of the bird when it came out of the oven, and it was delicious. Because those turkey juices mixed in with that filling inside that bird. And it was delicious. And, you know, come to think of it, we don't do that anymore today because people could die, they say. But you know what? I can remember all those years in the 50s, in the very early 1960 and 61, Nobody that I knew of died from that. So maybe that's something new. But I can remember mom having to gather up the seven sweets and the seven sours. That was part of our Thanksgiving meal. I can remember to this very day, the the aunts and uncles and relatives who came to our house. There was always 12 to 14 people for Thanksgiving every year. It was a monumental event. Uh, I can remember the desserts, the pumpkin pie, the mincemeat pie. Oh, Lord, that was awful. And, of course, as a kid, I couldn't have the whiskey on top of the hot mincemeat pie. And, therefore, it would just be mincemeat pie, which I was not fond of and I did not like. Uh, But, anyway, they usually had other pies for me, like cherry pie was always my favorite Thanksgiving pie. But the, the meal was sumptuous. It was a lot of it. The times at the table were just unforgettable to this very day in my old age. I remember it like it happened yesterday. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for the fact that I have a memory that can take me back to those times. Oh, yeah, let me tell you. After Thanksgiving meal, we laid down on the floor, on the couch, or a chair. We turned on the black and white TV. We had no remote controls. We had to physically change the channel. Or change, actually, one of us had to change the antenna to get the right reception in. And we'd watch professional football. And it was usually the Detroit Lions playing some team somewhere. Uh, Detroit Lions were the Thanksgiving staple uh, for years and years and years. So the bottom line is I remember all of that well. And every Thanksgiving to the present, I give thanks for the fact that I have those memories like they're still there and I'm still able to go back in time and relive them and have a wonderful, wonderful deal. So I wish everybody, Pennsylvania, Dutch or not, uh, basically to have a really wonderful Thanksgiving with your family, your friends, and may you have a joyous, joyous day. Those answers were wonderful, and I want to thank my friends, and I'm going to give them a much bigger shout-out here towards the end. But I think it's only fair that I also give my two cents on all of this since it's my podcast. You know, for me, Thanksgiving has always been my favorite holiday, even as a kid. And I and I know Christmas always gets all of the um, all of the attention. And granted, I loved Christmas too, um, as a child and as an adult. I still love Christmas, but there's just something about Thanksgiving that has always been more important or more meaningful to me than Christmas. And, you know, Easter is also a holiday that I hold very dear in my heart and to my faith. But Thanksgiving, I just, there is just something about Thanksgiving. Being at home, a table full of food, surrounded by family, and hopefully being able to truly think about the things that we are honestly thankful for. I don't think there's any other holiday that makes us become so um, introspective, right? Christmas, it's all about giving gifts or receiving gifts. And we're, we're thankful, of course, for the gifts that we receive. But do we ever really take time on Christmas to truly think about what are we thankful for? We're too busy celebrating and, and, and enjoying our time. And Easter, for those of us that are Christians, is a time where we do think about, you know, rebirth and, and chances at, at a new a new a new birth, I guess I should say, in the resurrection. But not everybody's Christian, so Easter is a holiday that, that not everybody celebrates. And we think about the other traditional holidays throughout the United States, you know, calendar, Fourth of July. I don't think we're becoming very uh introspective. Now maybe Memorial Day um, where we do think about how thankful we are for the people that made the ultimate sacrifice for our country. 
But truly Thanksgiving is the time when we look inward and take that opportunity to really think about how thankful we are for all that we have. I think it's only fair that since my friends answered the questions that I answer the questions too. So what does Thanksgiving mean to me? Well, I kind of just talked about it. It's that one holiday that you know, you go through all of fall and summer and you have Halloween and you have uh, Labor Day, but Thanksgiving's that first holiday where you come back together and you sit down inside in the home, not outside of the picnic table, um, and you're you're insulated again with your family and, and wonderful food. Thanksgiving has always been that holiday for me. It was especially important for me when I was uh, in, in college because it was one of the first times that every year I'd be able to come back home for an extended stay, having been away for a couple weeks in the fall semester. And Thanksgiving was that first break where I could get a break from classes, but also to come home and be with family that I hadn't seen in a long time. And then on top of it, to enjoy a wonderful home-cooked meal. And it it always has been that, even though I'm no longer in college, we still have Thanksgiving on our family farm every year, and even though I'm not in college anymore, it is still a homecoming aspect every November to drive home to the farm, and now I get to take my children with me, and they get to experience it like I did as a child. So Thanksgiving is that one holiday that truly uh, pulls at my heartstrings for a lot of reasons. And when I think of memories that come to mind, I mean, I, you can listen to last year's episode where I really delve into what it was like for me as a child growing up on our farm and celebrating Thanksgiving. But I do want to share one story with you that I didn't share last year. When I studied abroad in Germany, uh, I was there in the fall, of course. Uh, I'd gone over and flew over in August, and I was there in September and October and November. And it came time to be Thanksgiving in Germany. Well, and, you know, Germany doesn't celebrate Thanksgiving. And I couldn't imagine not having some kind of Thanksgiving meal. Um, what I didn't realize was how difficult it would be for me to pull this off. I lived in a small apartment in, in the city of Paderborn, Germany, which isn't a, a large city. It's a city, but not a major city. And I had made a lot of friends who were international students while studying there who all wanted to experience an American Thanksgiving as well. They'd seen it in the movies or on TV. And I said, absolutely, I will cook a traditional American Thanksgiving meal for everybody. You're all invited to my apartment on Thanksgiving and we'll have this meal. I was not thinking ahead because as the time approached to prepare the meal and as we were getting closer and closer to Thanksgiving, I decided, well, I got to go grocery shopping. Uh, and, you know, all of the staples that I thought of in what always graced our family dinner table at Thanksgiving, things like dried corn and, and Pennsylvania Dutch potato filling, uh, were not necessarily that easy to find in Germany. And the thing that I found the hardest to find was a whole turkey. Turkey is was, I don't know what it's like right now, but back in the late 90s when I was living in Germany was not the easiest thing to find in a German grocery store. So I looked, I went to every grocery store in the city of Paderborn, and not one of them had a whole turkey. Uh, and that's when I started to get worried because I was like, I got all these people planning to come to dinner, and I don't have a turkey to make. And this is th American Thanksgiving. You can't have Thanksgiving on a turkey, right? So I had to make a compromise. Um, and... Uh, I ended up going with duck because I couldn't find a turkey anywhere. Save my life. I could not find a turkey. So I bought a whole duck and I roasted that uh, with the caveat that as we sat down to dinner that day, I said, everyone, imagine that this is roast turkey, even though it was roast duck. Uh, but everybody enjoyed it. I'm, I, and I did the best that I could in a small apartment. And any of you that have ever been to Europe know that appliances in Germany are much smaller or in Europe are much smaller than in America. So everything was on a scaled down version. It didn't change the atmosphere of the day. I was very homesick that day in th on Thanksgiving when I was living in Germany because I knew exactly what was happening an ocean away. Um, I called home that day and talked to everybody, of course, and, and shared happy Thanksgiving wishes with everyone. But I think I could literally smell my mother's kitchen that day an ocean away. And I tried to rec recreate that the best that I could uh, in my small apartment, but it just wasn't the same. I was surrounded by people that I cared about, but again, they weren't my grandparents or my brother or my father or my mother or my uncle. It was different. But nonetheless, I was thankful to be where I was. I was thankful to have a table full of food. 
Um, it wasn't the Thanksgiving that I was used to, but it was a Thanksgiving nonetheless. And I'll always have that memory um, <laughs> in my mind about my Thanksgiving away from home, uh, eating roast duck and uh, having as many traditional sides as I could whip up in a small apartment <laughs> in, in Germany in the late 90s. My favorite foods, that's too many to list. You know, that's another question I asked my friends here uh, to think about. You know, when there's not one food that's on the table at Thanksgiving that I don't like. The ones that I truly look forward to every year, though, are dried corn, which is a traditional Pennsylvania Dutch side dish. Uh, you take dried corn and you cook it in water until it, it kind of reconstitutes itself. And then you add brown sugar and salt and butter, lots of butter and milk and pepper. It's just a great side dish. Traditional Pennsylvania Dutch potato filling isn't unique to Thanksgiving. However, it always tastes a little better on Thanksgiving with that fresh turkey gravy. Um, and my grandmother's spiked pumpkin pie. Uh, you can't beat it, my dear friends. You can't beat it. And what am I truly thankful for this year? Boy, I've been thinking a lot about this before I sat down to record because as many of you know, if you listen to the podcast, 2020 and 2021 were rough years uh, for the Maiden Ford family. We lost uh, my last two remaining grandparents, my grandmother in 2020 and my grandfather here in 2021. So this will be the first Thanksgiving this year coming up where um, those chairs will be empty at the table uh, for the first time in my life. And that makes me very sad. But the table will still have people around it, and we will still have food. And I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for the opportunity to gather together, the opportunities to eat a good meal, to share love and community with those people that are most important in my life. I'm thankful for a lot of other things, too. I mean, we're coming out of the pandemic, you know, COVID numbers right now are starting to decrease, and I, I, I'm seeing the light on the horizon, and I'm hoping that as we continue moving forward, those numbers will continue to decrease, and we will slowly or hopefully quickly be moving out of this era that we've been in the last couple of years. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for having a job. I'm thankful for my family, of course, for my friends. I'm thankful for the opportunity to do this podcast. I'm thankful for all of you that listen to this podcast and the, and the wonderful comments that I receive every month and after every episode about how you enjoy what you're hearing. It means a lot to me, and I'll continue doing that because I know it's bringing uh, joy and, and thought-provoking ideas to anyone that wants to listen to this show. So I'm thankful for all of those opportunities that, that I have been gifted so, as we enter the last remaining days of autumn, as we prepare for winter, a time of darkness and cold here in the North northern hemisphere, let us journey with thankful hearts and minds. Let us find the generous sides of our spirits to give to those who are less fortunate than us. Let us all build longer tables instead of closing doors. I would like to say a quick word of thanks to all of my friends who contributed to this special episode. Thank you, Maria, Alex, Megan, Deb, Larry, Kelly, Chris, and Jake. You all come from so many different parts of my life. Some of you are former students. Some of you are colleagues of mine. Some of you are friends that I've only made within the last couple of years. And some of you are lifelong friends and distant family. Your voices and comments were much welcomed and honestly appreciated. And for your friendships and relationships, I am truly thankful. For all of you out there in podcast land, I would like to wish all of you, my listeners, a very blessed and bountiful Thanksgiving. And you know what? Go ahead. Have an extra scoop of mashed potatoes and one more slice of pumpkin pie. You've earned it. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Thank you for listening to Doug's Front Porch, a conversational podcast with your host, Doug Maidenford. If you enjoyed this episode, I'd love for you to subscribe, rate, and give a review on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast from. Five stars only, please. Follow along on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Just look for Doug's Front Porch. Also, please feel free to tell all of your friends about the show, and I'll see you all next time on My Front Porch. 